Hello and welcome back. Forgive the um, scope noise. I have to put both the scopes on in the morning. But this time of year in the UK, because it's bleeding, freezing, it, well, it's just on the edge of freezing. But uh, in this workshop, there's no insulation as such. So it's, anyway, it's bleeding cold. Right, let's cut to the bleeding chase. Here we have an output transformer, single-ended, for as far as I know, came out of a signal generator, and I have two, so I could make a stereo amp. However, all is not well. It came out of a signal generator, therefore it was made for 600 ohm operation. It has two secondaries. And if we pootle over here, this is my representation of the secondaries. Now then, I've done the measurement, so what I'm doing, I'm putting a signal into the primary how do I know that that's the primary? I got one of my meters and measured across all the windings. The ones with the highest resistance must be the one with the highest number of turns, yeah? So therefore the one with the highest number of turns is our primary. That's how I know that this one here is a primary. It was something like... Oh, I don't know. I can't remember what it was. So anyway, what I'm doing I'm feeding the signal in from my signal generator audio analyzer and then I've got the outputs on the scope there and as you can see both the controls are at the same thing we're on point to one we're on 100 millivolts per division and as you can see out of one we're getting very little and out of the second we're getting a lot more output so that means we've got a different turns ratio. Now then, I did the maths. Here's how you do the maths. You've got an unknown output transformer. What do you do? First, you've got to find the voltage ratio. So what you do, you stick a voltage in. And so what I did was stick five volts RMS in and then measured the voltage out of the each secondary. So out of the, what I suspect is the 600 ohm, uh, secondary I got 1.8 volts out and out of the other secondary I got 0 0.147 volts out if we do the maths so to find out whether this is going to be suitable for an amplifier or whatever because a lot of these single-ended unknown single-ended output transformers aren't they were designed to, for radiograms and things like that where they had speakers in parallel and things of that nature to... and so basically a lot of these single-ended output transformers aren't suitable for amplifiers with one single 8 ohm load. Anyway, doing the maths, we've got 5 in, 1.8 out. We divide that 5 by 1.8, right? And we get 2.7 for one winding, and we get 35.7 for the other winding. Okay, that's the ratio. If we divide that 5 by 1.8, we're getting a ratio. Therefore, so now then, what we need to do, we need to get that 2.7 times it by itself and then times it by what our nominal impedance of our speaker is going to be. And usually we say that's 8 ohms. Although a speaker, depending on frequency, can go anywhere from 6 to 400 ohms. So it, it isn't a linear thing. It's got inductance and capacitance and all sorts of things that mucks the bloody sums up. But for simplicity, we'll say it's 8. Now then. If I use that 2.7 and do that sum, I get 58, which is no good. It is no fucking good at all. 58 ohms, useless. We need more like 5k for a 6v6. However, if we do that and we replace that 8 with a 600, we get, what did we get? Blah, blah, blah. Right, we get about 4k. 
Then if we use that 35.7 to 1 ratio, do the same sum with 8, we get 10,000 or about 10k. It's 10 point something whatever. We forget the points for now. We're just keeping things simple. So, 10k, too much. Looking at the 6v6 data sheet, so I don't know what I'm talking with. Looking at the 6v6 data sheet, we see we need a, a sort of impedance for the valve, the 6v6, to see from about 4k to 8k. Somewhere in that range will do us, right? We're not fussy. So 10k, no good. We could probably use that 10k, but we need more than we need more HT. We need more voltage. Problem is, the 6v6 only likes so much voltage. We can't just go sticking 500 bleeding volts on it. Also, that 10k, it's not good as far as frequency response is concerned. So, this is the plan. <coughs> we'll connect them in series to get a different ratio. We can't connect them in parallel because one of these windings is different to the other. We don't know what gauge wire it is and it's got different turns so we can't connect them in parallel. Anyway we wouldn't want to because that's going to give us less. This here, say if this was just a resistance, this will dominate this one. I don't know, or is it this one will dominate that one? I don't know. You get the idea anyway, it ain't gonna bleeding work. Right, I'm, I'm putting together a prototype after getting totally confused about the secondary windings. The secondary windings, I had it in my head that if I connected them in, in series, then I would get something between that really low ratio of 2.7 with the 600 ohm and uh, like a mixture of that and the 35 uh, what was it 35 to 7 sorry 35 0.7 to 1 ratio but you, you don't do you you don't get a mixture because that uh, lower ratio dominate so what you what you do get at you get a little bit less but not as much as you think so I was getting I think I tried it and actually worked it out in the end so instead of 2.7 ratio 2.7 to 1 ratio I was getting where the bloody hell have I put my figures 3.1 something like that still no good so we can only use this one of this secondaries you see the reason this I'm skeptical that this will work it, it might do but I'm not sure this is that this output transformer is out of a um, advanced J1 uh, one of the iterations of the Advanced J1 signal generator, the one that used the 6v6. And what they did, they had this sort of low frequency output transformer with another higher frequency transformer wired in sort of, the, well, the primaries were wired in series and then the secondaries of both transformers were wound in various sort of states of parallel-ishness, if you understand me. So, this is not ideal. I did think about trying to find another transformer to put in series with it, but that's going to be difficult. I asked the bloke who I got him off if he'd saved the other transformers. No, he chucked them out. The peanut. So it is what it is. It'll either work or it won't work. I tested the transformer just frequency, and because I was worried that it would just be only really good up to four kilohertz, which is what that it was used for in the signal generator, from 15 to four 
so, sorry, from 15 hertz to 4 kilohertz. I was worried that it'd be shite, anything over that, but it tests all right up to 20 kilohertz. So we'll give it a go. I mean, it, it looks well made. It's got plenty of uh, laminations, so it should be, you know, good low frequency. I mean, whether it'll be good for a 6v6, I don't know. We might have to try something a bit more exotic, like a triode strapped uh, 807 or... Oh, I don't know, I've got other weird output valves. Anyway, where was I? Bas so basically what I'm doing there, I'm just wiring the anode to one of these uh, sockets here. Uh, I don't know, a bit like that. So that's the anode wired up. Uh, I've just got a sort of scrap of paper here telling me what all the connections are because I can't remember them all. So, number four, grid two. So, we can either just connect that. Yeah, that would be triode connected, wouldn't it? Right, well, that's one thing I didn't write down what that grid 2 screen grid voltage wants to be at okay so i'll leave that one for now that's pin 4 pin 5 is grid 1 so we can wire that pin pin 5 up all we need is uh 470k or something like that resistor uh, I'm just making this up as I go along, as per usual. Right, so pin 3, anode, pin 4, grid 2, that's pin... What do you call it? So... Right, hold on, where's cathode then? Cathode pin 8, right. Okay, I've worked out roughly what sort of... Uh, what cathode resistor I want by just looking at the data sheet and dividing what it says there this should be at something like minus 12 volts so that mean the cathode has got to lift that up 12 volts uh, by a sort of expected anode current which is or cathode current which is about 30 milliamps 12 divided by 30 gives us 400 so what I'm doing, I'm just going to use the 470, okay, or I could just use two 10Ks to give us 500, two 10Ks in parallel, right, I can't find, oh, here we are, looking for a 470, okay, resist that, uh, right, where's my solder? These sockets are a bit scabby, having been used countless times. Any of those cheap Chinese jobbies. I'm just tacking stuff in really, not, to, not paying particular uh, attention. Let's see about putting that there. Right, then we need a cathode resistor. Oh, sorry, I just booted your, uh, booted your camera. Here we are, 470. And, okay, I've got a... 400... I don't know, what's that? There we go, 470. Will that reach? I've got a 470 and a 68 ohm. Alright, well, we'll just bob that in, right, pin 8, which is here, doesn't matter which way this goes in, a bit more solder. Yeah, one thing that was throwing me out on the output transformer, 
uh, was the I seem to have got a malfunctioning scope lead. It's reading lower than what it should do, which is weird. So it seems to be a this morning seems to be like a malfunctioning scope type thing going off. Um, one of the when I was on the uh, I was using the Tech 545 at first, and I noticed when I put a signal into input A or input 1 or whatever it was on the 1A1 plug in, it was pulling the signal voltage, the voltage down of the uh, signal generator in the HP audio analyzer. So that needs looking at, and then later I found out that the lead. One of the uh, scope leads was malfunctioning. It's probably something I've done to it in the past, sticking too high voltage in it or whatever. They're only cheap Chinese jobbies. Right, so that's everything there for the 6v6, apart from screen grid, which we can just set with a resistor, just use an 100 ohm resistor or something like that. But I'll look at the data sheet to confirm that. Uh, right, for the <coughs> for the 6SN7, obviously we've got two triodes in um, Yeah, I'm going to just use the 6SN7 to drive that, the 6V6, with the usual uh, 47K anode resistor. grid resistor and then just the 470k did I just say 1k cathode resistor or grid resistor 1k cathode resistor I'm not going to bother decoupling it or anything I just want to chuck it together and just see what happens really I'm just playing you know uh, right. I was hoping I was going to have 247k so that uh, I could wire both triodes up, but what I'm going to have to do, because I can't find another 47k, is to just ground all the cathodes of the other triode. Right, so on a 6SN7, 6AHC, it goes GAC, grid, anode, cathode, grid, anode. 47k, we'll try that. And we'll bomb that one over onto there. Uh, yeah, that's a good point. We've got it. Ah, we'll just, we just use, I'm not going to bother any, with any decoupling. Usually what you do, you drop the voltage down a bit to the input valve, but we'll just wing it. So that's the anode resistor, cathode resistor, 1K. done that before with these sort of connectors, you know, these sort of tag strips. One of these tags is, goes straight to your chassis, and I've done that before where I've connect, used that tag for uh, HD or something, and I wonder why I've got no HT, and I've got a smoking resistor or something. Right, so that's 1K cathode on the cathode, 47K on the anode, and we just need another 470K for now, but we could use anything really. It doesn't really matter. 
any metal. One mag. And then we find a 417. Ooh, what's that? 500k? Yeah, I don't know. No, I don't use them. They're nice little one percent resistors. some wiring in there. Let's put these resistors away. <coughs> uh, of course we need a capacitor. Right, moving on a little bit. Got every component in there that I think is needed. So it's always a good idea to check your work and then check it again and then check it again because it's really easy to do something daft. I mean, this is a simple circuit, but there's still enough going on to be able to make a mistake. So first check the heater wiring. Yeah, I know it looks absolutely horrendous. Yeah, going to the right pin, seven and eight on the six SN seven and eight eight, six eight. Oh, I don't know, whatever, it's a bloody Russian 6SN7. 7 and 8 on the 6SN7. 2 and 7 on the 6V6. On the 6SN7 we've got one triode grounded. Because we don't want to leave the grid, the an anode and anything, want any of those electrodes floating about while it's being heated up. So any electrons that are emitted are going to get shunted to ground, off the cathode that is. Uh, and then grid, uh, which is what, one, two, grid, uh, sorry, pin four, got our input, so we've got a coupling capacitor from a pot, which will have a signal in, and a 330k to ground, give them a tug to make sure they're on alright. Now, are they? Now look, see? See, look? And then, that needs soldering. Good job I checked, isn't it? Otherwise, that grid would have been floating. Right, let me just solder that one moment. Now, it's always a good idea to give your joints a tug. Right, so, yeah, we've got a signal going in, one end is grounded, is that grounded properly, yes. Make sure it's not going to touch anything else. The next one, gap, remember, so anode, 47k. I've got a coupling capacitor going out there into the grid of the 6v6. And then next pin we have, oh, is that in? Yes. Yeah, then we've got a 1K, let me sit down. 1K going to ground, that's grounded. It's not grounded exactly right because we've got the output stage ground going over here. That should be over there. 
because all that current of the output stage is going to go to our ground of a power supply. We don't want that current going through the same sort of ground or past the ground of our input stage really but for this prototype we'll just ignore that. Okie dokie so blah 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 grid cathode grounded anode yeah that's connected okay and that's got a high voltage HTB plus source spin it round that goes then there and then we've got a 100 ohm drop in oh yeah, it's just a grid stopper really going to the screen grid there's my tugger yeah that's in there okay uh, right hold on let me just make sure we've got the right pins so where are we three is anode check is that pin three one two three yes four um, screen grid yes five screen um, sorry control grid 470 to grand and that's being we've got a signal in all we've got to do now in theory is uh, well put some valves in and apply power Oop. the old crappy old chassis right so 636 there 6 and 7 there that has to go to one end of our uh, output transformer and then we need to put a load on that secondary there I am NOT going to use my normal dummy load I've got a uh, big resistor here this is a oops 6 ohm resistor with a you can uh, alter it with a tap I'm going to use that 4 ohm tap and then what we can do is move our load and try different loads to see if it does make a difference to the output in terms of output voltage and uh, total harmonic distortion so we need a bunker signal in there valve valve voltage we we'll use our big power supply right I'm going to drink my coffee which is getting cold mm. Ah, bugger, it's just gone past the optimum temperature. Swine, yakking on too much. Drink me coffee, go and get some valves from upstairs, and then we'll power it up. Well, got some valves, and we're just about ready to power up. But first, I've got to go and feed the birds. Give me a look outside. I know a lot of you subscribe, a lot of the. I know a lot of you that uh, subscribe live in other countries, so I'll just get them all away. Anyway, we're supposed to be having a storm later on today. It's a horrible, windy, wet, drich, as they say in Scotland, day. Yeah, I'm just going to nip out there into the mud and whatnot and give the birds some food uh, they're eating a lot at the moment it's a blue tip zoom you in oh, try and hold it steady getting all the heat out Blue tit there, or a great tit, can't see from here. So I've disturbed them. There's a blue tit up there, and a blue tit up there. There we go. Right. 
tits, great tits and sparrows. I always feed the birds, it's just my way of trying to give back to nature. We take so much and take it for granted. Just my way of just trying to say thanks. Helps the birds out. They need to eat a lot this time of year. Probably more than the more than their own weight every day just to keep warm. I've got to take the ass off so many of the survivors anyway. Let me go and give them some grub. It's empty. And shut this door and keep the warm in. Right. Stick some world in. Try this. We've got a ballon howl. And they used to make projectors, so I would have think this would have made by it says R E what does that say? R E I made in USA so I don't think Bell and Howe made valves, I think they had valves made for them maybe. Bell and Howe 636 uh, Russian where is it? Six N A T S or six H six H eight C six S N seven. In other words, more or less. All right, will it work? Right, first we've got to put some power supplies on. Right. Longer voltage up. Find that. Just using the DC power supply to uh, power the heaters up. Uh, Six point three one. Right, let's supply some HT. Got about 100 volts. There we go. Got a 100 volts at the moment. And already we've got an output. That's um, one volt a div, I think. Yeah, it is one volt a div. Let's do it. 250 Ah, right, and the output hasn't gone up much Only 74 millivolts Okay, I've got 1.6 out Nice, isn't it? Nice clean sine wave. At the moment, I think we've got about four ohms on the load. Uh, yeah, 250 volts. So let's see how much we can get out of it. Uh, one volt going in, right? That's full whack. So one volt going in, 1.6 volts out. Let's have a look at the THD. 3.94 Jeez, yeah, so that's per the data sheet now Let's bring the voltage up a bit Amplitude 2 volts 2.5 I think that's starting to clip there Yeah Looks like it is a bit to me. See on that bottom edge there. So we're getting 2.7 out. Let's see if uh, increasing the HT to 300 will help. I don't. I don't suspect at all. 300 volts. Two 
2.9 3 volts let's give it a bit more amplitude amplitude 2.5 V as you see we're starting to clip there on the bottom end it's there look THD 9% just we reduce that a little tiny bit 3.14 7 percent but I mean this is just a thrown together circuit so let's say we're getting three volts out that's about one watt I reckon uh, let's have a calculate I'll just go and get my calculator. I'm pretty sure that's about 3 watts. Right, before we can calculate how much power out there is. Ah, it's going to be higher than 3 watts, isn't it? Because we must be using a lower... Uh, whoops, a lower resistance than 8 ohms. Right, 4.3. Four point three. <sighs> okay, yeah, I suspected because uh, we've got a lower load resistance, about two watts. So let's see if we increase the load, whether we get more. Right, so now we've got higher load, 6 volts, uh, apply some heater, turn me meter off. Three hundred. There's our output, one point nine. And so, can you see that? Uh, check our sine wave. Yeah, as you can see, that's starting to clip at the top and the bottom. there okay so that's given us 3.5 turn that down 3.5 blah 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 yeah, well it's going to be the same isn't it because our it's not going to go much right so basically right we put a bigger load on Right, don't do that because you've got high voltage there, you prep. Right, it's not going to be that much, right, because we've got higher voltage out. We've also got a higher, a bigger load. 3.5 to the power of 2 divided by 6. So our output is still the same. Right, if I'm quick should just have enough battery life to film this bit right just taking the DC conditions um, on the 6SN7 we've got 122 volts on the anode 3.7 on the cathode 0 on the grid just drawing a quick load line and that sort of corresponds roughly with the load line of a 47k resistor anode resistor and 300 volts HT I'm just drawing a dot at 4 volts just to save mucking about and that puts us at about 4 milliamps. We had a 1k resistor, 3.7 volts, therefore that should give us about 3.7 milliamps which isn't too far from our 4 milliamps on our graph here. And then if we, we were putting in 2.5 volts RMS so let's just say that that's about there and there and then we drop down 
and I make it we got about we should be getting about 30 volts peak to peak out which basically equates to about 21 volts RMS ish 20 volts RMS oh, RMS which really isn't enough to drive our 6v6 I measured the DC conditions of the 6v6 on the screen grid we were getting 299 volts on the anode we were getting 283 which means there's a 17 volt drop across the output transformer the screen grid should be lower than the anode so we need to improve the voltage sort of divider or whatever there but I knew that anyway the other thing that sort of sticks out is that the cathode is sitting at 16 volts and really we should be sitting lower than that so 16 volts divided by 470 which is our cathode resistor what I threw in there 470 plus 68 gives us a cathode voltage of 29 milliamps really that should be a bit higher so we need to lower the cathode resistor sort out the screen grid divider um, you know to set that at a proper voltage the other thing we can do is we had no decoupling on the voltage um, voltage amplifier put some decoupling in sort that out and we also didn't have any um, decoupling across the cathode resistor on the output stage. All this should give us a higher output voltage. When, and the other thing is obviously, you see here, look, we've got uh, 16 volts on the cathode. Right, 283 volts. Right, so let's just work that out. Anode voltage, which means, where are we? 283 take away 16 267 volts um, across the valve altogether which means basically we can knock that up we want 370 we can knock the HT up to 33 uh, sorry 330 340 odd volts okay because what's important is is we don't exceed the anode maximum anode voltage but that is always in relation to the cathode so we can take that off you see because the cathode's floating up here is ground here's the cathode and here's the anode as it were so it's this voltage across here that's important so quick summary improvements increase the anode resistor on the 6SN7 voltage amplifier decouple the cathode resistor the cathode voltage is about right and what else yes sort out the screen grid sort out the cathode resistor decouple the cathode resistor with a big cap we shall work that out next I um, think that's it, we better go, the battery's going. More later. Oh, right, it's the next day now. And it's still rough as hell out there. And I have to go and feed the birds again because they've run out. So anyway, before I do that, we'll just catch up on what we did last. So we worked out that we needed to improve the gain a bit. Well, we needed to improve the gain a lot. So, with that in mind, I changed the cathode resistor of the 6V6 driver output stage to a 390 ohm wire wound, well in wire wound, W22 series. And then I stuck a, what's that, 100 microfarad, 63 volt, capacitor across that that will improve gain a lot the other thing I uh, did was put a potential divider in place of that 100 ohm resistor to set our screen grid voltage at a lower voltage than what we had uh, 
I'll go into that on a bit of paper which is easy, more easy to do and then the other thing I did I changed the 47k on the voltage amplification stage to a 62k just what I had really lying around I didn't want to use 100k so I've sort of gone somewhere in the middle so I've replaced the anode resistor with 62k and then what I've also done I've just put a decoupling capacitor across the cathode resistor to also improve the gain. Right, I'll put this down and then we'll have a look at a bit of paperwork. So, put in a coupling capacitor, if we've got just your normal sort of cathode resistor there, and it goes to ground, that basically lifts the cathode up, putting it above the control grid. So the good so the control grid, because that is kept at zero volts, I'll stick that there, because the control grid is kept at zero volts by this grid leak resistor here, and it's referenced to ground, and we and this there's a voltage across here. Why is there a voltage across this resistor? There's current flowing through this resistor, so therefore there's a voltage drop across it, and that lifts that cathode up. So that's at zero volts, this is at 3.7, so therefore our control grid is negative in relation to the cathode. When we do that though, we get good distortion figures and what have you, but the gain is lowered. The gain is lowered because as the current flows up and down through this resistor, then this changes. So what we need to do is decouple that to ground, AC decouple that to ground by sticking a capacitor across. That keeps that fixed, therefore we get more gain. See because that's going up and down, then it's losing gain. So we, we just put a capacitor across there. And the same applies to the 6V6. Now there is a formula for working this out, and it's 1 divided by 2 times pi, right, pi is 3.14 roughly, yeah, so I just use 6.28, so it's 1 divided by 2 times pi, times time, er, uh, sorry, times by either the frequency, times by the resistor, or you can substitute the frequency for the capacitor, or whatever, so it works all different ways. But really, you don't need to do any of that for your sort of um, common cathode couple whatever gain stage. You just stick a 47U in there and that bad does it. Anything from 10 to 100U will do. For the frequency, you want it something low, don't we? We want it to pass because basically this resistor and that capacitor form an RC filter. Right? Uh, it's a high pass, so it only lets frequencies of a certain frequency over a certain frequency pass. So we want something low, like 15 hertz, 10 hertz, or whatever. But we have to be careful with this because of stability. We can, if we're not careful, if we have it too low, we can have a problem with low frequency instability. So we, you know, we can change that. Also, the bigger the capacitor, the more bass response you get. Because what that bigger capacitor is doing, it's lowering that high pass filter um, pass point. Okay, bigger, re bigger the cap, the lower the frequency. But we don't want it too low. A speaker can only do something like, most speakers can only do something like, what, 40 hertz up, you know, your woofer. So we don't need really a frequency response right down to bloody 15 hertz, do we? And so for the output stage, the 6V6, we had a 390 ohm 
cathode resistor as opposed to 1k in the uh, 6SN7 voltage gain stage so we need a bit bigger of a cap I think. so really the same sort of applies there really anything from 10 to 100 to 330 take your pick anyway let's crack on because this video is getting reet long so I powered it up I went to power it up now and then I found that oh I know what I had to go into I powered it up and I found that the that our screen grid on our 6v6 was too low it was at 210 volts I was aiming for 250 volts <coughs> as per the data sheet so what I used was a 22k a 220k across the HT and ground and that's our screen grid yeah and then I just decoupled that again for the same sort of reasons with a capacitor I just use a 10U because that's just what I had that's pretty sort of normal sort of uh, value to use so too low so then what I did I stuck a 10k in there and that basically made everything right because that was too low replace that 22k with a 10k all good and right let's power it up shall we heaters on crank it up uh, let's turn that up start to see a signal soon you keep an eye on the scope I'm just turning it up right there we go okay we're getting three volts out there with a one volt input so that has basically sorted our gain out really nicely hasn't it before we was having to put 2.5 volts in now we're only having to put one volt in and we're getting the same gain out we keep bunging that up and we're starting to clip on the bottom getting horrible what's it effects as you can see though our waveform at the top and bottom are different a nice peaky sort of pointy sort of uh, what's the word peak there and it's rounded at the bottom I think that indicates a lot of second harmonic distortion we could find that out by looking at the what do you call it um, Well, we could do that, can't we? One moment, and turn that on. Right, that's interesting. Here's our FFT plot. As you can see, that's a second, that's a third. We've got quite a bit more third. But what I've had to do to get this to all work is to change from that uh, dummy load to this dummy load. That was six ohms, and this is eight. Now then, look at this. See our peaks now look, they've changed, the better. And our THD has really improved. That's interesting that. With the 6 ohm load, we were getting a lot higher distortion. Let me just crank that up to where we were, 3.5. Crank that up a bit more. See, we're getting more power out as well. Now that's starting to clip at 4.6. Right there. We're getting more power out now. That's because the secondary load is being reflected back onto the primary of this 6v6. And it's a basically a better primary impedance this is why we were doing all those sums yesterday and this is why I didn't think this output transformer would work because it's designed for 600 ohm that secondary there and that secondary there is designed for 5 ohm and we're using it on an 8 ohm load now when we put it on a 
four to six ohm load, you would expect that to be better, wouldn't you? That's what the output transformer is designed for. But this is telling us different. Eight. Yesterday we were getting figures of 12 or more. So let's turn that down to something more sensible because we're not going to be listening to music at that. Right, two volts, two percent. Now that's all right, that is. Now I'm surprised that that third uh, harmonic is dominating. Let's turn it down and see if we can get that. Yeah, that second's going up now, look. I mean, really, you know, this ear look, we're only talking a gnat's whisker. Uh, what are we talking? Log. What does that represent? Fuck knows. But really, yeah, <laughs> it, it, it's the, the actual difference between the third, second and fourth harmonic is very little. Whether you'd actually hear that, I do not know. Well, what we'll do before we go and build it properly, we'll do a listening test. So I'll wire it up so that we can... Uh, now, can we... Yeah, we'll do a listening test. Right, I'm going to go and do my shopping. We'll come back later and we'll do a listening test and see what we think. Right, I've got the old smartphone connected up. Blah, 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 going in. Let's give it a go. See how it sounds. Oodles of bass. Right, that sounds like that's distorting a bit to me. I'd best be quick because the bloody battery's running now and again. I think my battery's going on this camera. Right, so I hope that gives you a rough idea of, you know, what it sounds like. And I hope that um, in this very long video that I've demonstrated that you can knock up a simple valve amplifier in the uh, matter of a day or so. Um, it's not really complex, I hope I've shown that. There is a few little bits of sums and things in there, but really, you know, you could design one and throw the stuff together without all those sums, although they help. Because when things go wrong, you do need to know a bit more of an idea of how, you know, what's going off. So we're going to cut it there and I'm going to build it um, on one of those, uh, what do you call it, upside down roasting tins again. It'll be a smaller one. Hopefully uh, it'll be quick, a pretty quick build but I have got to wind the mains transformer having had a look at what I've got. So once I've wound that we can just knock it all together and uh, hopefully it'll be a part two. And we also obviously need to make a few tweaks. I don't think the gain's quite right yet. And I also think that the it needs a little bit of negative feedback because the frequency response isn't brilliant. Anywho, thank you very much for sticking through all this waffle and whatnot, spending the day with a diabolical artificer. Thank you all very much for watching. Take care of yourselves and ta-da for now.